Well, welcome to our pr process going through building really a deep learning network. So now in this presentation, we're going to talk about regularization and we're going to focus in two very types of regularization, L2 and L1 regularization. Let's begin by looking at some data. Oh. Uh, so actually we visit this problem in the previous video. So we had a curve fitting problem on few samples and we saw that we prefer something like this, which has less variance compared to something like this, which has a higher variance but has a lower training error. So the one on the right with the high variance, if that model was correct, if that blue line was the right fit for all those points, absolutely correct, and we knew it was correct, the, the bias would be zero. But we noticed that that would not generalize because it's absolutely correct. So its ability to generalize would fail in a spectacular way. And therefore our training would have to be redone. It would have to be redone for every sample and there'd be no way to connect the trainings mm -hmm. between the samples. So we really don't want to have the situation on the right. Let's look again at some data and what we could do about it. So the previous slide was some sort of a care fitting problem. What if we have some sort of a classification problem where we want to find the decision boundary between different classes of data? Uh, again, we would have the same problem. Uh, do we prefer something like this, which is a VR shaped boundary surface, <coughs> decision surface, or something like this, which is a very simple um, boundary surface or something like this, which is not that complicated, but uh, it covers, but it seems to be a good fit for separating two classes. So we have this idea, regularization, which we are going to look at in more detail as a way of reducing the complexity of mm. the surface and reducing really our model complexity. So in a sense, we're starting to look at the fact that we don't want the most complex model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want maybe not the simplest one either, but somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically as a parameter to control a trade-off between these two like uh, extremes. extremes of the model. Yeah, yeah. okay, well, so let's take a look at this further. Ah, here's the math. Ah, I love math. So I think, let take us through the math here. So one way to like constrain the model complexity is to, is to have some limits on the value of weights. And that could be in form of uh, a square value of the weights. So basically we add this term, which is the norm two of the weights, to the loss function. So when we add that term to the loss function, um, supposing the norm or the length of the vector square w is very, very big. That means that the model in some sense is, is a big model in terms of its values. And then we multiply it by alpha. We want to reduce the effect of that W. Exactly, exactly. So if alpha was zero, we'd be back to the same old, same old. And if alpha was 10 million, then we wouldn't care at all about the data. Mm -hmm. So alpha is somewhere between 0 and 10 million and it changes. So small alpha means it really has very little effect. Big alpha means huge effect and you would just be fitting the length of the vector squared. Simple model. Yeah. Sim so that's simple but it has no information. So we want somewhere in the middle. Exactly. And uh, if we look at the derivatives of uh, L2 norm, we see that the derivative is proportionate to the value of w. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a quadratic. So. Yeah. so if you have a higher value for w, we have a higher descent for the value of w. So we'd go, we'd, because we're going to take that gradient, multiply it by a minus. So if w is big, then with the alpha, we're going to increase the descent yeah. in that direction. So it's some sort of a spring that pulls the w towards zero. So if you're farther away from the zero and we have like big weights, we are pulled toward the zero with a higher like a string, something like so this. So if it's if the descent rate is faster with 
the alpha w term and the gradient, then you're going to have an interaction between how we pick alpha and how we pick the learning rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, these are parameters and we'll look at how we might tune these parameters later. Uh, so another common choice for regularization is uh, just adding the absolute value of the weight to the loss function. So here we are just minimizing the absolute value of the weights, which is called L1 regularization. So again, if we look at this uh, expression in terms of gradients, we can see that uh, the, uh, the way that the weight is pulled towards zero here is not proportionate to the value of W. Here is just proportionate to the sine of W. So, uh, can I borrow that? Yep. Thank you. So, if we're actually doing some math here, so the sine of W is going to look like something like this. So, if it's positive, we give it a sine of 1. So, that's sine of W. And if it's negative, we give it a sign of minus one. And if it's zero, we give it a sign of question mark because what do we do at zero? So some, in some uh, neural network programs, we do that. In other programs, we do that. But let's go back to the time of Monsieur Fourier in the 18th century. He would give us this which is the value at zero. So maybe we could take the sine of w to be zero when w is zero. Mm -hmm. That might be dangerous because this is in the gradient, so that means gradient would be zero at that point. And that's great. zero gradients are not a good thing to have because nothing moves when you have zero gradient, everything is flat. So maybe we could wiggle this around. So we may maybe take some small number that we could draw from a distribution, mm -hmm. epsilon, so that the mean of this random variable would be zero, and a small variance, so it could mm -hmm. wiggle a little bit around zero, and that would be a good way mm -hmm. to define the value at zero. For L1 regularization. For L1 regularization. So uh, that said, we can now look at the uh, look at the value of penalty in terms of L2 and L1 regularization. The blue curve is the L2 regularization and the, and the orange curve, orange line is the L1 regularization, is the penalty for L1 regularization. So here we can see that if the weights have a high value, have a high value, uh, the penalty for them is higher. Since it's the screen, we see that in terms of gradients too. Uh, but for L1 regularization, the rate of the, uh, the like, speed of descent is always constant. And this is in, uh, like, uh, more important when we are like, close to zero, when we are in this area. If you magnify that here, uh, if you are close to zero, the rate of descent is uh, still constant for L1. You see? Yeah. But for L2, it would be flat. And that would give us, would result in uh, some, uh, some like, uh, it, it results in different effects on the, on the weights. So if it's zero again, or near zero, we could actually take a very long time to get to the minimum, for example, because we're not going to move very fast. The gradient's going to be zero over almost a flat region. The point is, yeah, if you are here, uh, it doesn't force the weights to be exactly zero. As long as the weights are small, it's enough for L2. But for L1, it pushes the weights to be exactly zero. And that actually gives us uh, something which is a sparse representation. And that's the outcome of the L1 regularization. Well, we may not want weights to zero. As long as we want the weights that go to zero to be those weights, it's okay, but it may not always work. Mm -hmm. But in some applications, we prefer to have like uh, exactly zero weights. Yeah. For example, if we want to select the optimum set of weights, we just want to like compress the network or something like that. Yeah, for data compression, this is a good thing to do. Yes, yes. So, exactly, if we see that in the next slide, this is exactly this phenomenon. So, if we change the 
regularization rate. So alpha is the regularization parameter, and it's it's less on the right. Oh no, it's uh, it right increases is less. as we go from it right to left. It increases as alpha increases as we go from right to left. Here and here. So take us through these curves. I assume that every color represents a weight. Yeah, different weights, yeah. So we have different weights, and we can see that uh, for L2 regularization, they are just pulled towards zero and we, as we increase the learning rate, sorry, the regularization rate. As we, have, uh, as we enforce more penalty on the L2 regularization, as we increase the alpha term, we have much smaller, we have a smaller and a smaller weights. Yes. But for L1 regularization, we see something like this. The weights re re decrease, decrease, and go to exactly zero. And then they're stuck there. And right? then they stop there because of the curve that we see in the previous uh, slide. So L1 regularization gives us exactly zero weights. But L2 just gives us a small weights, not necessarily exactly zero. So if we want a sparse model, it would be delightful to have many weights equal to zero as long as the network does the job. Exactly, which is the case of L1 regularization. So let's look further at how we descend. Here is a graphical representation of what we're doing in regularization. L2 on the left, L1 on the right. Now these are, we have the independent variables W1, W2, two weights. And we have to satisfy being on the constraint of the regularization and being at somewhere on the loss function where these two coincide. So you can see the solution here is at that point and the solution for L1 is at that point. Can you explain what the important conclusion we have to draw at this point is? Mm -hmm. So basically in both cases, W is a small we constrain the value of W, but here W has two components and the intersection is here, but here W only has one component. So the other one is, uh, is zero, which gives us a sparse representation of weights. So when we want that sparse representation, it's clear we're going to use W1, and we, when we want a smoother representation, we'll use uh, W1 and W2 in L2. Exactly, exactly.